welcome back to lesson number two in Swift for Beginners. In today's lesson, we're going to be mainly focusing on variables, constants, and statics. Now, before we get started on those three particular things, I wanted to talk about what Swift actually is. Uh, for those of you who don't already know, so Swift is a programming language created by Apple back in 2014, and it was meant to replace Objective-C, which is an older language from back in the 1980s. So the reason it was kind of made was to modernize the language and make developing a little bit more fun. Um, kind of like get rid of the verbosity of the old language, add some like newer modern features, and just make it more of a pleasure to develop. So Swift is used mainly to create iOS apps, Mac OS apps, um, Apple Watch apps, so mo most of the Apple ecosystem. Um, it can be used in other places like backend servers and things like that. But for the sake of this video, um, I suspect that most of you are interested in iOS development, which is why you're here, which is awesome. But yeah, that's kind of what Swift is. And in today's video, we're going to be starting off with variables, constants, and statics. So what the heck is a variable, constant, and a static? So let's just put this up here to get started. If I can type today. Cool. So a variable and a constant are very similar. So a variable is a is basically a thing that you're assigning to another thing. So what does that mean? That's the most basic definition. So here we have this variable that we have called str, and it points to this string called hello world, right? So a variable can point to two types of things: a primitive or a, or an object. So a primitive are things like strings, like this here, a number, um, a decimal point number, which is called a double, and things like that. Objects are things that, um, like a class, that models things in the real world. So we might have an object that represents a person. So uh, a variable John could represent a particular person. Um, a per uh, an object can also be, for example, let's take the Facebook app. An object can be each of the Facebook posts in your newsfeed. So let's see this in example. So we have this variable, hello world. Let's create a variable called x and make it 4. Let's create a variable called y and make it 1. Now if we wanted to add up this 4 and 1, we can now do x plus y. So the variable actually is your, your instance of whatever you're assigning to it. Whatever you call it goes on the left of the equal sign, and whatever you assign it to goes on the right of the equal sign. Cool. So now, the other important thing about a variable is, as the name implies, it can vary. So a variable, even though we said y up here is 1, later on in our code, what we can do is we can say now y equals 2. So if we were to do x plus 1 here, or sorry, x plus y here, we would get 5. But if we did x plus y here, we would get 6. And the nature of a variable is you can change it for the sake of it varying. So an example in practical usage would be if you're liking a post on Facebook. So initially it might have 4 likes, and then once you hit the button, it might not have 5. So you want to you wanna signify that in your code by holding that number in something that can change, which in this case is a variable. So that differs from a constant, which is, again, very similar. But the difference is, the only difference is that a constant, as the name implies, cannot be changed. So now I can't come down here and say this now equals 12. You're going to actually see an error on the right-hand side of your screen saying that you cannot change this. It is immutable. In other words, you cannot mutate it. So if you want to change something, a variable later on in your code, and just anywhere in your program, it needs to be variable. Now our error will go away. There's a red highlight line if you give it a second. There it goes. And now this is good to go. This is syntactically correct, and Swift is going to know what you want to do. So now that we have variables and uh, constants, what's a static? So a static is very similar to a constant with one key difference. That key difference being that a constant is something that you create once, but if you create multiple copies of the file or the object that it lives inside of, you create multiple constants. 
So I'm going to show you an example to explain what I mean. So we talked about how an object can be a person. So an object is a class. So if we create a class called person, um, and don't worry about understanding this concept of a class, we're going to have a separate video on this, but just for the sake of understanding statics, we have this person here, and we can create an instance of it by saying var john equals person. So now we have John, which is a type of person. So where does our static thing come into play? Let's say we want to have one case um, for a person named Dave. In here, we can make a static uh, variable, rather a static constant called Dave, and it can equal day, like a, an instance of a person. So let's just make sure that this is syntactically correct. No errors, looking good. So the benefit of doing this, now what we can say here is we can say let Dave equals the person dot Dave. So it might complain because we, we don't have everything outlined uh, appropriately. However, whoops, I actually made a mistake. We can actually not even include the parentheses so a static can be accessed without creating an instance so again if you're not too familiar with the class or familiar at all don't worry at all but for the sake of this video what i really want you to understand what is what a static is so let's recap a little bit so a variable is something you assign to something that can be changed a constant is something you can assign to something but later cannot change right so we can't do this line a static is similar to a constant, but the difference is if we create multiple person objects, every single one will have a different constant inside of it if it's just a let. But because we put this static keyword, we will only have one copy of one version of Dave throughout our entire application. So wherever we say person.dave, we'll just have one instance of Dave. So here we created John, and we have, it's an instance of a person. So imagine if we created a property in here called um, name equals, let's just go with Smith. Let's say this is last name, right? Let's say, let's make it a variable. And what we want to actually do here is if we create multiple of these, let's make this Jen, and let's make this... Bree, and let's make this Tim. Each of these people, uh, each of these variables in this case are instances, a new instance of a person. And each of them has this differing last name variable inside. And even if we make this a constant by putting a let ahead of it, each of them has a copy of this last name. The difference is if I say John dot Dave, which maybe isn't the best example, let's make this um, let's make this an age. And let's say this is 12, right? Every single person, if I get their age, it will be 12. And the beauty and the power of this is, uh, like in a practical example, let's say you only want one thing to ever exist for a particular object. You can make that happen through a static. So a practical example is, in a lot of iOS apps, I'm sure you've seen in-app purchases where the user can buy a ad or remove something through your app. So there is an object that handles all of the transactions and payments and credit card processing. And that object is called the transaction queue. So for the sake of this video, just understand there's this thing called the transaction queue. Now imagine if you, the person taps buy on multiple buttons and you're selling multiple things, you want the transaction queue to present those payment confirmation windows in order. So instead of creating multiple transactions at the same time and multiple pop-ups coming up and the person getting confused like, hey, what am I being charged for? you want only one transaction queue. And the transaction queue object is actually written by Apple. And if you, if you kind of guessed, the transaction queue is a statically created object. And the reason is, is because we only want one thing processing transactions 
Now things might get queued up, which is why it's called a transaction queue in a linear way that one thing goes after another, but that's the beauty of a static. It's there only once for the sake of the usage for that item. So let's, let's, uh, let's recap a little bit and let's show a couple more examples. So we can create um, a constant of, uh, let's say um, we wanna call it price and we can do one, dot, two, three, right? It's $1.23 or whatever your local currency is. Now this can't be changed. Um, let's say we wanna create a variable called name and let's say Joe. And let's say this is a current person who's like signed into our app, if our app has any like sign in mechanism to log into an account. Once the person signs out and a different person signs in, we can say now name is uh, Jill. We're sticking with the J names today. So in essence, a variable and a constant, um, they're the building blocks of everything in your code. So uh, we can ignore this complaint for now. Um, off of person, it's complaining because we now don't have a Dave. Um, and we can make this age and this will go away, this error. But um, in essence, a variable is something that points to something else. It can vary in its assignment. The assignment is the thing that goes on the right hand side. And the name of your variable, which is also called an instance, is the thing on the left hand side. This is the name that you give it. You can call it whatever the heck you want. Um, generally, of course, you want to call it something legible, readable, and kind of understandable. Um, a, a constant, whereas this is a variable, a constant is the exact same thing, but the value cannot be reassigned. Once you've set it to something, you're one and done. Um, you can use it at that point, you can get it, but you cannot set it again. So in this case, we can say this is a, um, let's say this is your last name, right? You cannot change this again. If you want to change it, make this a variable. Moving back to statics. A static is very similar to a constant where it cannot be changed. However, a static will only give you one instance of whatever you're trying to grab from a class, from the object, one time in your app. And I think a static is something that's a little tougher to wrap your mind around. Um, and I think we'll see this uh, more, better explained in, through examples in our later uh, examples that we do in later concepts we cover. But uh, again, to give an example, the transaction queue, if we're charging uh, a user transaction, like a payment, we only want to have one thing processing transactions. And that would be an example of a perfect candidate for something that we want to make static. And uh, another thing that I may have actually forgot to mention, a static needs to go inside of a class. So it needs to be a part of an object. You cannot put a static uh, outside of a class like we did for variables and constants. It'll actually complain. It'll say that it needs a type, um, which is maybe not the most, most um, helpful of errors. But what this is actually saying is it needs to be inside a class. And a class just represents an object um, we're not going to be worrying about what a class is per se in this video, but just know that a static needs to be inside a class, which is synonymous to an object. And this is how we would actually get that static out. So we can say um, the age is on person dot age. So you can say person is the object. We want the dot whatever the static uh, constant is constant is in here. This is how you actually create an instance of your person class. Uh, again, we don't need to focus on that too much, but just for the sake of explaining what I've written here. And yeah, these are just uh, some examples of a constant and a variable. And that about does it for this video. Um, I will be providing uh, some resources and some hopeful, uh, hopefully uh, some assignments uh, in the discussion area or comment section below. So I encourage you uh, to really, really, really understand these two concepts, rather three concepts of variables, constants, and statics as they are truly the funding fundamental building blocks of everything in Swift that we're going to be doing. So with that being said, I hope you found this video informative. Please, please, please leave feedback below if you have any suggestions whatsoever. Uh, leave a comment, a like, follow, um, whatever else you can do, please do. And I will see you guys in the next lesson.